New government is in discussions with Chinese investors. Honorable Premier Toket Alangi said the discussions is progressing well and he is happy to advise or announce government's intentions to allow investors to the island. With a multi-million dollars deal that is expected to reach in the near future, Premier Talangi said new need to increase development, but not business development from the keen business interests. He said the investors are only interested in building luxurious homes to escape to rather than settling on the island. Those with concerns, he said, should understand that the potential investors were advised by government that Niue will not operate or allow certain activities to be conducted on the island that will compromise its residents and the island. Premier Talangi also said there are many logistics to complete before there is an agreement and the government will undertake those investigations to ensure Niue benefits from any contract it enters into. He said the investors propose to pay $1 million each, totaling $100 million. Concerns about permanent residency permits for the new investors, Premier Talangi said there are provisions in the regulations that allows government to consider applications from investors that do not wish to reside in Niue. The multi-million dollars deal is expected to complete in September during the Pacific Leaders Forum in Auckland. The New Public Service Commission has issued a statement in response to a High Court ruling by Judge Wilson Isaac into the case of Makifu. Two weeks ago, the New High Court Judge Wilson Isaac made a verdict into the judicial review of a decision made by the New Public Service Commission in the matter of names within the Namukulu and Makifu electoral rolls. Judge Isaac granted the application for judicial review and quashed the decision of the New Public Service Commission. The matter was remitted back to the New Public Service Commission, who must now carry out proper procedures for a thorough investigation or review into the matter. Chairman of the New Public Service Commission, Pony Kapanga, says that the Commission has taken the judge's ruling on board as in the process of appointing two officers to conduct this investigation in accordance with legal principles set out in the judge's decision. It is uncertain how long this review will take, but the Commission intends to comply with the requirements and make a decision based on the findings of the investigation that is consistent with the previous matters of this kind in the past. An alleged incident that lands a man in hospital last week was supposed to be heard in a special court hearing yesterday morning before the expatriate businessman who allegedly assault him leave the island tomorrow. However, the alleged victim was told yesterday morning when he turned up to court that the hearing was postponed till the businessman returned to the island in a few months. Chief of Police Mark Chenery said the cha change was due to circumstances beyond their control. The businessman has been charged by police but yet to be appear before the court. Anyway, an exciting approach to protecting communities, children, youth and vulnerable people from the impact of cybercrime is about to be launched in Niue. Cyber Safety Pacifica will start with a series of police training courses and community awareness meetings next week. Chiefs of Police Mark Chenery said that the concept stemmed from the Pacific Islands Chief of Police Conference held in Brisbane last year. The Chiefs of Police identified a definite need to bring more awareness to the people of the Pacific on the dangers associated with the Internet. The use of the Internet and associated social networking pages is increasing at an astounding rate across the Pacific. This obviously offers fantastic opportunities to everyone, especially children and youth. It offers greater study opportunities, social networking, and a whole range of economic issues. However, with the opportunities come risks. Not all opportunities is for the good. The rapid expansion of the internet also offers opportunity for a wide variety of crime. This program will focus on those crimes identified as having most impact on children 
youth and vulnerable people. Cyberbullying, online sex offences, cyber predators and grooming by travelling foreign sex offenders. Chief of Police Mark Chenery said law enforcement agencies must be vigilant to cybercrime and ensure that we are the cutting edge of investigative skills and be sure that our communities are aware of the risks associated with the internet. Stalagmite rock caves may hold the answers to climate change patterns for new air as the island becomes the centre of research for a group of geologists. For the past two weeks, a team led by Dr. Paul Allen have been conducting research scoping some of the underground caves on the island. This is a follow-up of interest from the previous visits by Dr. Allen in 1997 and 2002, with particular interest in the paleoclimate study using caves on the island. The team has been working closely with the New Meteorological Office Programme for Climate Change and we caught up with Hilary Sletton and Dr. Joe Lambert, who are part of the research team that have come this time round. We've come now in 2011 to um, look at different cave systems. You have flank margin or coastal caves, and you also have inland caves. And they're two very different environments that record different types of uh, climate events. And what we're really interested in is the inland caves where you have really beautiful stalagmites that grow inside those caves from the ground up. And those are able to record um, rainfall. This week, we're still doing some um, uh, mapping and cave studies here on the island. We're also doing a lot of logistical planning and getting our samples uh, you know, shipped off the island and making sure everything is, um, has a certificate and lo you know, lots of little things <coughs> to deal with. So the stalagmites are great in that they let us extend rainfall records. Um, cyclone records thousands of years into the past um, and new ways in a great location in that we have so many um, caves to choose from and can produce a great record for the island to potentially give new way you know, five ten thousand years of the rainfall in history. The stalagmites will provide information that will be beneficial for new air in a number of ways in learning more about oscillation between La Nina and El Nino? Um, several different ways, and that's what's great about them. There's different, what we consider um, proxies. So it's just a another way of trying to estimate what rainfall was like in the past. One would be the thickness of each um, band. So they're very similar to the tree ring, where maybe a wet year you'd produce a thicker tree ring, and a dry year you'd have a thinner tree ring. Um, somewhat similar with the stalagmites. So the thicker the layers, possibly the, the more rainfall. And then we can increase our confidence in this interpretation look at the, looking at the chemistry of each band. So what difference will this information actually make in terms of, uh, if we're trying to learn about what happened in the past, uh, how will this actually help us move forward? Um, well, by creating, or excuse me, deriving a record into the past, it helps us also um, look at patterns in the past. Those patterns are what allow scientists to make predictions about the future. Um, and one of the other really interesting things we're trying to learn more about is the oscillation between uh, La Nina and El Nino events. And you might be familiar with uh, El Nino events that cause periods of drought or no rainfall. So learning about those patterns from the past can help us make better um, decisions or understandings of the future. Well, there's also the chance the data will be published on um, some of the uh, websites where people, other scientists can download the data and compare their records to the records from New Way. And that'll help, again, looking at the global picture. Um, the study is also uh, benefiting the meteorological station here of um, Program for Climate Change. So we've been working a lot with the staff there, and uh, we're going to be collecting rainfall and learning about the chemistry of the rainfall on New Way as well. So we'll be providing a lot of information to uh, their database here as well. According to the team, the experience itself has been unique 
it's been a wonderful experience. The caves here are very unique and um, it's just provided a wonderful environment for doing a paleoclimate study. So New Way is very unique in that respect for what we're doing. The two stalagmites have been extracted from site with commission from landowners will be used for scientific purposes only. The research team have one more week on the island before heading back to America. And to end our news bulletin for tonight, Careless acts by a vandal or vandals has left their business out of pocket and disappointed. The drink vending machine was bought in by Okako two years ago as a useful tool for convenience for the public to purchase drinks when the stores are closed in the evening. Last week, the machine was out of order, only to be found later on Friday morning that someone had kicked in the panels, which are now cracked meaning further repairs or possibly the need to bring in a new machine which will be costly. The matter has not been lodged with the new police but the message is for the public to take care of these machines and that this careless act by vandal penalizes everyone who uses the machine. That's our news bulletin for tonight. The summary of the new legislative assembly meeting this week we will bring you next week. Good evening. Thank you.